Hello, in this one I'm going to show you how to find the sum from n equals 1 to positive infinity of ln of n over n. So what I'm going to do is I need to first change the lower limit right here where it says n equals 1. The reason is the following. If I let f of x be ln of x over x, where does it begin to decrease? Take a look. So there's a whole lot of, a lot of stuff happening here. And I'm going to write that as x is negative first times ln of x. So f prime of x will be negative 1 x to the negative second and then ln of x plus 1 over x x to the negative first. And then, so this is the derivative using the product rule basically. And then here I'm going to have negative 1 over x squared, ln of x plus 1 over x squared after cleaning it up a little bit. And then uh, because the x squared is the same in both, I can put this as negative ln of x plus 1 over x squared. And now what I need to do is check where the derivative basically is less than 0 because that tells me that the original graph basically slopes downward this way, it's decreasing. So here I need to solve this inequality, negative ln of x plus 1 over x squared is less than 0, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by x squared, so x squared on the outside here, and also x squared over here in that position. So now we'll have cancel off x squared here and x squared here. That's going to leave me, in other words, on the bottom, negative ln of x plus 1 less than 0, okay? 0 times x squared is 0, of course. So what I'm going to do is subtract 1 from both sides, getting negative ln of x less than negative 1. X, I'm going to have that ln of x, therefore, has to be greater than 1. Just divide through by negative 1, flip the direction of the inequality the usual way. And now to solve this for x, I need to exponentiate both sides. So it becomes e to the ln of x is greater than 1. And then I cross off the e and the ln because they're opposites. So on the left side, I end up with just x is greater than e. Now remember, in this context, e is like a continuous variable, whereas in the original, n is a discrete variable because its values are like 1, 5, 10, and so on, not 1.58 and so on. So over here, you see, this is x is greater than e, and e is about 2.7. So for that reason, re with reference to the original sum, what I have to do is take n to be 3. I can't take it to be 2.7, that's not an allowed value for n, because n is a whole number, like 5 or 10 and so on. So I'm going to take n to be 3. So now what I'm going to do, the rest of it, is use the integral test. So beginning from 3, up to positive infinity ln of x over x. So first I'm going to separate ln of x and then the 1 over x dx this way. And I will do that because now I can say that u equals ln of x, du equals 1 over x dx. And now I can replace 1 over x dx with du, ln of x with u. And it's going to give me the following, x equals positive 3 through u equals ln of 3. So what that is telling me is the lower limit of integration is going to be ln of 3. Now I'm switching it to u as the variable. Upper limit of integration originally is infinity. The new one will look like this. When x is infinity, it's u, u equals ln of infinity, which is still infinity, okay? So now I'm going to write my integral. ln of 3 is the new lower limit of integration. Upper one is still infinity. ln of x, well, that's defined to be u. 1 over x dx is defined to be du, so the new one looks much simpler, just this way. ln of 3, positive infinity, u du. And to differentiate, using the power rule, nothing too fancy. So also because the upper limit is still infinity, it's an improper integral, so it's going to look like b limit as b approaches positive infinity, b in the top as the upper limit of integration, on the bottom ln of 3, u du. And to differentiate with the power rule, basically, so it becomes 1 half u squared, and then here it's b, and then the ln of 3 in the bottom. So now what I do is I plug in the upper lower limits, and I kind of take the limit. So I'm going to kind of pretend that I'm doing that by just replacing u with infinity, because b is kind of becoming infinite, correct? So I'm going to have something, roughly speaking, that looks like this. This is not mathematically rigorous at this point, just gets idea across. So 1 half infinity squared minus 1 half ln of 2, ln squared of 3, rather, well, this value right here is just a constant. This, on the other hand, 1 half of infinity squared is still infinity. So it's just infinity as the result. So what that is telling me is that basically this sum, beginning from 3 through positive infinity of ln of, of, ln of over n, <laughs> diverges. That's what it's telling me. In other words, that's the answer pretty much. Thanks so much. Please leave a like and subscribe. I'll see you in another video.